Hi, my name is Henri Jodicoeur. I'm a French Canadian psychotherapist and my special field of interest and study at this time is brainwashing and mind control by cults. I met Swami Bhaktivedanta in 1969 when I was 19 years old and I was happy to learn from him the basic of what Hinduism is all about. I had studied with the teaching of Paramamsa Yogananda a few years before that and basically Hinduism has a common thread of teaching. And number one, Hinduism believed that the soul is in the body and at the time of death the soul will reincarnate into another body or if it has attained perfection it will become or one with the divine or will travel to the place where gods reside Hinduism believes in karma every action as a reaction Hinduism believe in ahimsa non-violence for that reason Hindus are mostly vegetarian because they do not want to take part in the killing of animals these are all teachings that were included in the Hare Krishna movement. To this day, more than 40 years later, I am still a vegetarian. My beloved sister, Marjolaine, who met Swami Bhaktivedanta in 1970, became a vegetarian and became involved in writing books regarding animal rights. She has written more than five books and she is known internationally in the French language as someone who has helped the cause of the animal all around the world. People usually would join a religion, be the Hare Krishna, or the Jehovah Witness, or the Mormons, or Scientology, have a tendency to accept the religion's teaching as a whole. They do not question the religion. Everything that is taught in the religion, the disciple or the followers has to accept. And many in the Hare Krishna movement are of that opinion that Swami Bhaktivedanta was pure, perfect, enlightened, and therefore everything that he said, everything that he wrote, everything that he did is perfect and is correct. And I completely disagree with that affirmation is teaching on the intelligence of women well was scandalous he taught that women were less intelligent than man that they should be subservient to man and when this philosophy trickled down to the schools of the Hare Krishna movement in the 70s and early 80s. The Hare Krishna movement in many places taught that girls should not be educated but should be married very young. And even if it was illegal in places like New Vrindavan, girls were married 15, 16 year old. And it is unfortunate that many women who joined the Hare Krishna movement 
while Swami Bhaktivedanta was alive and after, accepted this philosophy, oh, he is right. I am less intelligent than the man around. So they had to be subservient to all the leaders of the Hare Krishna movement that were all males and still at this time mostly male for the belief that Swami Bhaktivedanta was right. Swami Bhaktivedanta really condemn homosexuality in many of his books. He even said that being an homosexual is demoniac. Unfortunately for him, he did not seem to recognize who was an homosexual and who was not. Some of his leading disciple, like Kirtanananda and Bhavananda especially, were lifelong homosexuals and both of them were also pedophiles. And that's one of the tragedy of the Hare Krishna movement that Swami Bhaktivedanta accepted in his movement all kinds of people from the streets without any psychological evaluation and many of them were crazy many of them were pedophiles that eventually made their way into the schools of the Hare Krishna were more than a thousand kids were physically or sexually molested and of those more than 25 have now committed suicide and hundreds are now in 2016 living extremely dysfunctional life. Sometime in the 1970s, Swami Bhaktivedanta started to give sannyas. He asked many of his celibate disciples to take vows to be celibate for their entire life and over a an hundred, if not a few hundreds, men took that vows, including myself, people who were 21, 22, 23 years old, took vows to be completely celibate for the rest of their life. No intercourse, no masturbation, they had to forget that sexuality existed for them. And that created tragic event. Some of the most tragic is the death of Vishnu Janan, who took his life at the age of 28 year old because apparently he had broken his vow. Another friend of mine, Viraha Prakash from Venezuela, also took his life because he had broken his vows. There's been many more all around the world who took their life because they had promised all kinds of things to Swami Bhaktivedanta especially concerning their sexuality and they were unable to fulfill their promise. And the disciple of Swami Bhaktivedanta who became the leaders after he left continue to propagate these stupid belief that women are inferior and that homosexuality 
is demoniac. I think one of the worst example is a disciple called Siddhar Swarup. His name is Chris Butler, who declared himself to be the greatest guru in the world. In the late 80s, with his own disciple, Mike Gabbard, who is now a senator in Hawaii, associated himself with the right-wing Christian organization in Hawaii, got over half a million dollars to organize a propaganda against homosexuals in Hawaii. He took really seriously the fact that Swami Bhaktivedanta said homosexuals are demoniac. He still has a cult called the science of identity and anybody that knows that cult knows that the cult is totally homophobic, anti-homosexual to this day. Although publicly the Hare Krishna movement will deny that they are racist. In the first book of Swami Bhaktivedanta, he mentioned clearly that the black race was an ugly race. He said often that there's things that you say in private, like his racist remark, and things that you never say in public. Swami Bhaktivedanta arrived in America with one dollar. And over the years, the Hare Krishna movement starting in New York by selling magazine, by selling books, made some money. But by the 1970s, there was many temple to maintain and the Hare Krishna started to develop all kinds of money scam. Swami Bhaktivedanta knew that his time on earth was becoming shorter and he took money from left and right without asking where the money come from. I think one of the most scandalous is how the temple in Vrindavan, India, the holiest of holy for the Hare Krishna was built. It was built by a disciple called Guru Kripa who was bringing money to Swami Bhaktivedanta by the hundreds of thousands of dollars and all that money was made from drug dealing and Swami Bhaktivedanta never asked hey where did you get that money by hook or by crook he had to build uh, those temples I think that the greatest victims in the Hare Krishna movement are the children that were born and raised in this society, they were forced to believe that blue god Krishna is God and that the various gurus, be Swami Bhaktivedanta or Kirtanananda and so many others are the pure representative of God himself. They basically have been brainwashed from birth. Many went on to a life of total confusion and many have committed suicide. I think that's one of the saddest parts 